Okay, this is Glenn Young, and today we're going to talk about knots, and my later episode we're going to talk about hitches. And if you think these are really cool, what we learned today, then make sure to check out my other videos in the advanced videos. Uh, you'll find uh, an advanced application of some of these um, in different techniques as well as some advanced knots. So first we're going to start with the overhand family of knots, um, which almost everyone has been exposed to. We're first just going to start with a single overhand knot, um, and then we're going to turn it into something else, a little more advanced. So I'm going to start with an end of rope. Sometimes it's called the tail of the rope. I'm going to wrap it around my fingers to make a cross, and at that cross I'm going to pass the tail through. That's pretty simple. We're going to change this into a different type of knot now. This is called the barrel knot, which is also in the overhand family of knots. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use these two fingers here again. I'm going to wrap around and make a cross. I'm going to continue to wrap one more time until it crosses again. And now at that point where it crosses again, I've pinched it in place with my thumb so I won't lose it. Now I'm going to pass the tail through both strands and pull it tight on both the tail and the standing end of the rope. One and two. And now I have what's called a barrel knot. You'll notice on one side there's an X and on the other side there should be two parallel strands. In another video I'm going to show you how to use two barrel knots to create what's called a fisherman's knot. The barrel knot is commonly used as a stopper knot, either in rescue systems or when you're repelling, which is most common, as a stopper knot so you can't repel off the end of the rope. This would jam in your belay device. Okay, we'll move on to the next knot, an overhand family. This is called an overhand on a bite. In knot climbing speak, a bite simply means a bend of the rope with no twists. So I make a bite and then I'm going to wrap the rope around my two fingers, there's that cross again, and then pass it through the opening and pull. And if I do that the same way that I did my original overhand knot, you'll see that there's no twists or overlapping of the rope, which keeps this rope's strands in the strongest possible position. Okay? Next, I'm going to do what's called a flat overhand. A flat overhand is a type of knot that's commonly used to join two ropes together. In rock climbing, um, as guides, we always use the flat overhand to join two climbing ropes together if your rappel is longer than one rope length. Okay. So I take ends of two different ropes, or in this case I'm just using one rope as a demonstration piece, place them together so they're parallel and lined up and I'm going to measure off uh, about a foot to a foot and a half depending on the diameter of ropes you have. The fatter diameter rope you're using the more tail or the more rope you're going to need and then I'm going to do that same thing. I wrap around my fingers and then keeping those ropes parallel I can pass them through. Sometimes I'll push them through this way or sometimes I'll just push a bite through like this and then pull and now I have four strands coming out of this knot and I'm going to pull on all of them together and then each of them individually to snug this rope up. So one, two, three, four, and for security if I'm going to be rappelling on this knot and it's going to be in this direction I'll do that one more time. One, two, three, and four, and that would be how I would join two ropes together in order to rappel. Okay, I have one last knot to show you in the overhand family of knots for this video. Again, check out some of our advanced videos to see some more overhand knot families. So the next knot I'm going to do is called, commonly, slang for this knot is a BHK, or big honking knot. So I grab a bite and then I fold that bite in half onto itself so that you can count four strands. So we have one, two, three, and four strands there. Okay. You're going to need a fair amount of rope for this, so I'm pulling out about, about a foot and a half on this 9.0 millimeter rope. Okay. Now I'm going to bring all those four strands together and I'm going to make 
an overhand knot treating these four strands as if it's one rope. Instead of using my finger and wrapping around, which can be a little bit difficult with this many strands, I'm going to go behind the back of my wrist like this, grab these, pull it around to the front, and then pull this through like so. And just like our, well, previously when I pulled on each individual strand, I'm going to pull on each of these strands coming out, of which there are eight. Four coming out the bottom and four coming out this top in order to cinch that down. And now I have a BHK or a big honking knot. This particular knot, it's common to clip this extra loop that's hanging out the backside for security in the event that you accidentally tied a slip hitch there instead of the overhand with all of those strands. A uh, knot like this is commonly used to create a master point in the middle of a rope. Um, there are other applications uh, of a similar knot, which would be an overhand follow through in order to tie someone into the middle of the rope in fifth class climbing okay, situation. For the last knot that we're gonna do as a member of the overhand family, we're gonna do double fishermen's. Now, this is a little bit loosely related to an overhand. It has a different application. The double fishermen's is a way to join two ends of rope together that you don't need to get undone at any point. So for example, when I'm rappelling, I like to use the flat overhand because I'm gonna need to untie those ropes. The flat overhand also rotates so that the tails of the knot and the knot itself are less likely to catch up or jam as I'm pulling the rope. This knot that I'm doing, the double fisherman's, would be a really good stopper knot, which means it's really likely to jam and crack. So not a very good way to tie two ropes together that you're going to need to pull. However, if I'm going to use this to make a prussic loop that then I'm going to apply as a friction hitch, I'm not going to need to untie that anytime soon. So in that case, it's great to use the double fisherman. So let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to tie it with a small cord, which is realistic. Typically, I'm using five or six millimeter cord at about four and a half foot length if I'm using it for rock climbing. If I'm using it for rock climbing, I'm going to use it to come out of a cross. If I'm using a different length, I'm going to the glacier that I'm driving. This is a six mil cord, and I'm going to tie this to make a pressing cord. So the first thing that I do is I grab one end, and just like earlier in the video demonstration, I'm going to make a barrel knot. So once again, I use two fingers and I wrap, I make a cross, I continue around, and when it crosses over the second time, I pass the tail underneath, continuing in the same direction as the tail of the rope was going before. So I push this underneath and I pull, but this time I'm not going to cinch it down. And I like to have two to three inches of tail on there. Okay? So it's not cinched down. Now I'm going to take the other end and pass that through that hole there. Okay? And now I'm going to tie a barrel knot again around my fingers, but I'm just going to rest the standing end of rope that's making this loop on my finger, and it's going to tie around my finger and around that standing end of rope at the same time. So you see I make one loop around. Okay? It crosses, and then at the second time it crosses, right there, I'm going to push this tail through, again, in the same direction that the rope would have been going previously, just like this. And then I push that through, and I pull that. I can push this with my fingers as well, making sure not to uncross these two strands, and so that I have two to three inches of tail just like that, and then to cinch this down, I pull these two knots together, okay? And I pull, and you can see that tightening up. Over time, the more it's loaded, the tighter it will get. You can check to make sure it's correct, because on one side, you should have two X's that are lined up the same direction, so the angle of this strand here is the same as that strand there, and on the other side, you should have four parallel strands. And that's the Double Fisherman's.